So today we're gonna talk about grinding fundamentals and how to improve on the basics in order to achieve a better service finish. Hey, what's up guys? My name's Chris. I'm new here at Titan CNC. I'll be taking over the CNC grinding department. Most of my experience has been on an S41. So when I came in, I found another test piece. I was kind of curious to see what the finish was like. So I had Travis, our inspector, check it. He got a 10.8. I know for a fact the S41 can do better than that. So today we're gonna shoot for under 10 and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. We're gonna change a few parameters and really refine the basics of what a grinding machine is capable of doing. In OD grinding, if you're grinding between centers, it's very important that these centers are, are clean. So before we load it back in the machine, we're gonna actually clean the centers off with a piece of paper. And when we get up to the machine, we'll wipe down our centers. So these are the things to keep in mind when we're finished grinding between centers. Number one, center pressure. So when we locate between centers and we don't have proper center pressure, that wheel could be skipping on that part and resulting in a bad finish. We want to have adequate center pressure when we're grinding between centers, that way that wheel follows smoothly along that part. So proper center pressure is important. So it's gonna come with feel or with experience. You want it just snug enough to ride, to ride on those centers. So we're gonna snug it up a little bit more with this. Three good turns, it should work. We're gonna go back to our indicator, grab our indicator. We're using a tense indicator. I've already, since I've already done a test grind on this piece, it should run dead nuts. All right, so we put the indicator at zero. We're in set. We're gonna rotate the workpiece to check the run out. It's running pretty dead. That's very important because we're running between dead centers. There's, there should be no movement in that indicator on the OD of that part. We're gonna go ahead and check the other side. Make sure it's running true over there too. There's zero. So as you can see, there's no run out in the part between this, this side of that OD and this side of that OD. It's important to check that when you have a long width of a diameter that you're trying to grind, especially if you're between centers. Number two, speed of the wheel and speed of the dress. So remember, the faster we go, the sharper the wheel is gonna be, but the poorer our finish could possibly be. The slower we go, it's really gonna tighten that wheel up and it's gonna give us a better finish. So the RPM of the wheel is important. Proper wheel speeds and dressing speeds will produce desired finishes. So now we'll go to technology. This is the grinding and dressing speed. We're gonna be grinding and dressing at 8,000 surface feet a minute. For this application, we're gonna keep them the same. A number of dressing passes, we're gonna make one dressing pass. Dressing amount in X, which is how much we're gonna take off the front of the wheel. We're gonna be taking off three tenths. And remember, since it's a 30 degree wheel, it's gonna compensate for how much it's gonna take in Z. A straight wheel, you can program three and three, or five and four. But on this one, if we change X, it's gonna change Z. And the machine is gonna calculate that for us. But for this application, we're only gonna remove three tenths in X. And here's how we're, we're gonna get our finish. This is dressing in feet in X. That's how fast that diamond is gonna move across the face of that wheel. And then in Z, that's how fast it's gonna move down the side of that wheel. So in X, we're gonna move three thousandths of an inch per revolution or 4.6 inches a minute. So I slowed that down. That's about a good, that's gonna get us under a 10. Anything slicker than that, we're running the risk of rubbing the part rather than grinding it. Number three, RPM of the part. The bigger the part, the slower you wanna rotate it the smaller the part, the faster you want to rotate it. There's formulas you can acquire, but some of it's just going to have to be filled. It's going to come with experience and stuff like that. With this part, I actually had to spin it at 115 RPM to achieve my desired finish. Number four, pinch point of the coolant line. So as a wheel spins clockwise and the part spins counterclockwise, the two center lines create a pinch point. You want to put that coolant flow directly onto that pinch point and produce a 45 degree overspray of coolant. This is a pinch point I was explaining. So there's a center line of the part and there's a center line of the wheel. You want to put that cooler line right on that pinch point so we can help clear the swarf and the grit and reduce chances of burning. Number five, diamond inspection. Very important when you walk up to grind a part that you check your diamond. So when inspecting your diamond, you're looking for three things. A chip diamond, a missing diamond, or a flat on your edge. If any of those are present, it's time to replace the diamond. It looks pretty good. Let's grind it. Mm -hmm. 
that diamond is moving across in Z and we're getting a full touch up of the front of that wheel. Without a flat wheel, what we're achieving with dressing it, we won't be able to hold the sizes or the finishes we want to hold. In this instance, we're going to go ahead and true it up before we touch it and we're going to have an in process dress as well. It's feeding down for the Sensitron. Once it's picked something up, it's gonna start grinding. But well, we're getting close. There it is. We just hit the OD. It did a spark out. Now it's traversing to the other side. You see, we're getting a full cleanup already. That's why it's important to check your run out on your part. So this is what's called traverse grinding. It's basically feeding down four tenths at a time and then three tenths at a time for a finishing pass with a seven second spark out on each end. Once it grinds to position, it's gonna sit there and spark out on that part to make sure you got a full cleanup. So with this specific grind, I programmed it to only plunge down on the left side of the part. That way that wheel is in full contact with that OD and it's gonna plunge down, traverse across, and then come back and then plunge down again. You can program in different ways. You can plunge down, go across, plunge down. That's faster, but I'm trying to achieve a better surface finish. So we're only gonna plunge on one side. Welcome to grinding. Can't rush perfection, dog. There it is. All right, guys, just pulled the part out of the machine. Let's take it in there to try this inspection. See if we actually got under 10. Got a part for you to check, Mr. Travis. All right, man. What's you gonna be? Better than a 10? Oh yeah, it's gonna be better <laughs> than a 10. Six two four, man. All right. Take it. Let's finish all of the grind. We got a 6.24, well below a 10. I knew that S41 can do it. Super proud of the machine. What's the best finish y'all ever got? Leave a comment below. There's a lot more grinding content coming your way. Make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for new content. I'm Chris, see you next time.